Greetings everyone, this is Brother Stu, back to Baba Videos. Thank you God for another day. He has added unto our life. We want to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways that He may direct our path. That in all things He alone get the glory. Thanking God for this opportunity to share the Word of God. By His grace and by His mercy and by His great love. Uh, thank the Lord, it's been a long time, but we're back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We want to bring to your attention the baptism the baptism. We've done a, a video on this before, talking about the right baptism in the name of Jesus Christ in water for the remission of our sins, according to Acts 2.38, according to Acts 19, according to Acts 8, all the scriptures, the importance of water baptism for the church of Jesus Christ. But today we want to bring to your attention another aspect of it, because many false prophets have arised and deceived by the devil and are deceiving many to the point that many people believe that baptism is not necessary for the church which is a lie and many people are deceived by the devil and this being messed up many many winds of doctrine are, are spreading out there especially in these last and evil days but we want to um, look at the beginning with Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, and verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I thank God for my wife because... Um, According to the scripture, it says if, you, if the women have, have any questions, let them ask their husbands at home. And I thank God that she is very faithful in that fashion where something she's reading, she will come to me and we will talk about it. And I, and I count that a great blessing. So on yesterday, she asked me, what name was Jesus baptized in? And I, that's a great, wonderful question. And I, to make sure I understood where she was coming from, she said, what name was Jesus baptized in? And I said, he was baptized in no name. And she kind of looked puzzled. And I, and I said, For, remember, honey, I said, remember, honey, Jesus did not have to be baptized. He wasn't baptized in the name of John. He wasn't baptized in his own name. He was to fulfill righteousness. He is our example that we should follow his steps. Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God. He knew no sin, did no sin, no sin or darkness, anything corruptible was in Jesus. He was pure, perfect, spotless, blameless. That's why John the Baptist said, I need to be baptized of thee and you coming to me. And Jesus says, suffer it because this is the right thing to do. Now you have preachers, pastors, so-called religious leaders speaking against the baptism. And here we have the example who needed not to go into the water was baptized. And you're going to tell the people, oh, this believe and confess. And that's it. You are in grave danger. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. This is the right thing to do. It Jesus is saying. And he was not sprinkled. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. 
He didn't have to get into the, the river of Jordan if John was going to get a little basin and sprinkle and splash some drops on him. He didn't have to do that. Glory to God. He could have just, you know, sometimes when you're at the, at, at the sink, you can kind of couple, you can kind of, let me stand up so I can show you. You kind of can couple the water in your hand and kind of make a little bowl and, and, and throw it on your face. John could have went to Jordan and did that with his hand and threw some drops on Jesus. He said, no. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight way out of the water. See, people coming up this fake salvation and coming up to all these convenient rituals that's not grounded by the word of God. Because it's too much labor to get somebody dressed and, and glory to God and get into the water and in the name of Jesus Christ and all the motion. It's too, it's too much labor. Glory to God. It should be a joy and not a labor. Heaven rejoice when one sinner leave their dead works and, and turn to repentance and go down in the water. Heaven rejoice. The angels rejoice. But it's, it, you, you turn it into a labor and cumbersome and so inconvenient. Oh, you have to get them dressed and you got to water to put water into the pool. And here is our example. The master who did not sin, did not need to go into the water. And John recognized that. And here we got these false prophets telling people that they don't need to be baptized. Saying that baptism is not essential anymore. You don't got to be buried in water. So I'm, no, I'm not going to the other scriptures. I'm going to sit here and talk about the spotless lamb of God. Who said it was the right thing to do. Glory to God in the highest. The right thing to do. Hallelujah. The right thing to do. Glory to God in the highest. That's why the apostle said, Apostle Paul said, Thou art inexcusable, whosoever you are. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. I don't care what you say, what you bring, what philosophy you bring, what theology you bring, what doctor you bring. It doesn't matter what, what writings you bring, what kind of logic you bring. You cannot change the fact. That the master, the king of kings, the lord of glory, who did not have to be baptized, set an example of him going in water and being baptized because it was the right thing to do. And if there's any ambivalence, but John forbade him. John tried to stop him because he's like, no, you don't need this, Jesus. We need this. I need this. I need you to baptize me. Jesus forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Here is the glory to God. Jesus said, there's no prophet born of a woman greater than John the Baptist. Glory to God in the highest. He is the prophet that Isaiah prophesied about his coming. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Hit this same John that was prophesied about his coming, his ministry. Who wasn't even under the, the dispensation of grace for those who know those terminologies. Born under the law. Just like Jesus was. But he was sent to prepare the way of the Lord. So he was preaching the baptism of repentance. And here come Jesus. My God. Folks, I say this in love. Are, 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 we, are, we, are we paying attention to this when we go to church? Are we paying attention to this when we go to church? Are we just so captivated by the theatrics and the entertainment and how the pastor raises his voice and, 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 and all the emotion? Are we, are, are, we, are we actually looking at this? Yeah. 
Yeah, the phone keep ringing. It's the second time the phone rang while I started this video. But hey, man, it can wait. I don't even recognize that number anyway. <laughs> Go to Garden Eyes. But are we, are we paying attention to this? There's this new thing where people are, are saying, you know, from the pulpit, a lot of good things that itch the ear and sounds positive and, and whatever and uplifting. And, but cross reference it with what's written. Cross reference it with what's written. Because everything that sounds good is not good. We up shouting and jumping and making a whole lot of noise and clapping and don't even can't even retain what's coming from the word of God. At the end of the day, you can't blame your pastor. At the end of the day, you can't blame your, the preacher. You can't blame the elder. You can't blame the bishop. Glory to God in the highest. That's why God will always have men. In the land to, to make sure the people know what is right. The truth. God will always have men in the land. Long as he let this world tarry. He will have men to let people know what he require of us. Always. Glory to God. So any pastor. You go to church. Glory to God. And you ask them about baptism. And he start fishing around. Oh, well, it's a new time. That's the time you put up the finger. Peace be and walk out. It's, it's, it's no debate. Well, it's a new time and, and things are progressing now and it's about your heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I will go to this. Glory to God in the highest and finish out in this. For my so-called Hebrew Israelites. Uh, my wife and I spoke about that there, but as far as me going out there and talking to them again, there's no need. Did that before, and they have they are unex inexcusable regarding the water baptism. So just in case some some of you come, know some or they come across this channel, them preaching to the people, oh, baptism and water is done away with. You're baptized when when we preach the word, liar. You're a liar. So when we brought this scripture to the brothers in Acts chapter 8 and verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Hold it. The eunuch asked that question. What stops me from getting baptized in this water? Hebrew Israelite. They say that baptism in water is, is done away with after John. Do away with this scripture in your Bible. Do away with this. Do away with this in your, in your teaching. It's in your book. Glory to God. It's in your Bible. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip preached to him. Since Philip preached to him, as you say, when you preach that you're being baptized because we are preaching the word to you, that you're being baptized as we preach the word is, yes, the word does clean you. The word does clean you. But you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the part of the new birth. Water and spirit. Yes, you're not going to get baptized until you hear the word and the Lord open your heart and prick your heart to, 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 to see that you need to repent of your sins. We agree with that. But you just preaching the word ain't baptizing the people. There's something that has to be done. Hebrew Israelite. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And hear what, hear what Philip, the evangelist, the deacon said. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. That's what we need to ask people. Because there's a trend, a dangerous trend that's going on in the churches today. People getting baptized for all kinds of reasons and not for true repentance. 
Some probably think, oh, if I get baptized, maybe I can find a wife. I get baptized, maybe I can find a husband. Or I'll get baptized, maybe I can play the drums. Or I'll get baptized, maybe I can sing on the choir. I'll get baptized, maybe they let me in the pulpit and preach. I'll get baptized so I can get a title. I'll get baptized so this person in my family can get healed from their sickness. I'll get baptized because I want to get out of this, this debt I'm in. I want to get baptized because whatever. <coughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. What doth hinder me to be back? If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And what did he say? And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He, he acknowledged who Jesus Christ is. What he did. He died on Calvary for our sins. He recognized that he needed to be baptized because he was in sin. And he had to turn. Glory to God in the highest. That's the question we need to ask people. What they've hindered me. Do you believe? Glory to God. Do you believe? And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And here we go again. And they went down both into the water. Anyone who may be Catholic, I'm not judging you, but we got to point out the error of your ways according to the word of God. There was no basin and sprinkling them, saying in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Never done in the Bible. Nowhere. Not even in their book it's done. It was no need for Philip to get in the water if he could just, like I said, demonstrate it before, take a little bit in his hand and, and, and throw it on a eunuch's face. Because he is, 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 we are buried with him. And they went down both into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch. I love the word of God. It, it, it has a beautiful way of redundantly saying the same thing. Just so you can grasp it. And they went down both into the water. Just in case you missed it. Both Philip and the eunuch. To let you know who exactly they were talking about. That the word of God is talking about. And he baptized him and I'm going to tell you the truth and this is heavy because I have no scripture for where somebody can baptize themselves I, I have no scripture for that I have not seen that in the scripture where a person can baptize them baptize yourself you just, I don't see where that's done I don't see where that's done in the word of God I love this. And he baptized him. And you know, Jesus could have did that himself. He could have gotten in water and, and went on the water and came back up. And the spirit. But it fulfills all righteousness. See, God is a God of order. What's going on in the churches now is, is chaos. Hallelujah to God. Chaos. But you know, I thanks, thanks be to God. This was, was, this was um, shown to me that I, that I was going to start seeing a lot of this, these things happening in different, in different churches, in different organizations. Does it, does it still bother me and hurt? Yes, but I have to think, I gotta, we have to give God thanks for everything. It, there has to be a manifestation of the truth and darkness. Glory to God. There has to be a manifestation of the light and the dark. Has to be a manifestation. People are going to have to are going to people are going to clearly see. Glory to God in the highest, the truth, and all the lies are all going to be exposed. Lastly, while we have the time, thanks be to God. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 1, familiar scripture with the Apostle Paul. 
And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? A question. And I'm learning this as we speak. I, I like to talk to people about the Bible. I like to, you know, have discussions, you know, not argue. Who wants to argue? I like to talk about the Word of God. The Word of God is, is, is edifying to, when I discuss the Word of God. It, it, it's a blessing to me. Rather than talk about basketball or this celebrity and this one and all the foolishness with the politicians, that's not edifying to me. It's depressing, to be honest. I like talking about the Word of God. The Word of God is life. Hallelujah to God. It's life. But dealing with people who profess to be believers and Christians, there's a question we have to ask first before we even have a discussion. Because we're, we're learning that sometimes there's no point to going into a whole long discussion with certain people. First, we got to find out what kind of spirit they have. Because here recently, locally, we have been de dealing with this topic, the Sabbath, for a while now. When I went away, when I got sent away for my job, it, the series had already had started. And I can't, and while I was away, I was made uh, aware of that it has continued. And then when I came back, this situation happened again. All this... Um, talk about the Sabbath. Maybe Lord's willing we do a video on that, if the Lord's will. So me and a young evangelist was talking, and he, was, he said to me, and what he said was right, he said, he said people are, are, are so caught up on the Sabbath, we need to first find out, have they been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Have they been filled with the Holy Ghost? And I said, my God, I said, minister, you are right. I said, we weren't, and that then, then, then I'm reminded of the scripture with Paul, when he met the certain disciples, First thing he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you said you were a believer? Hallelujah to God. And he said, we haven't even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said he never heard of it. They were honest. And then here come the next question. He, and he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? So before, I'm not judging anybody, but you know, every, anybody can say they're a Christian. That's fine. I'm not going to say, oh, you're a Christian? Oh, that's fine. But, you know, but according to the Bible... I'm going to start asking people, like, oh, you're a Christian? Okay. How were you baptized? Oh, once you, that el can eliminate a lot of heartache and stress and contention. Because off, off the break, you will understand, like, okay, he doesn't understand the baptism. He or she doesn't understand the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. That's where we need to start. That's where the conversation needs to start. The fundamentals. Ain't no sense of me running the revelation trying to break down the seven golden candlesticks to this person. <laughs> Glory to God. Or understand the deep mysteries of, of, of Daniel and the 70 weeks and all that with them. And they haven't even been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That, that's not wise. So before Paul took the conversation any further, he had to investigate. Okay, let me find out. The, you, you send your disciples. I recognize you. I recognize you have something. You have some belief. Let me dig a little bit further to understand the foundation of your of your belief. Do you have the Holy Ghost? What kind of spirit do you have? Have you been baptized the correct way? Then we can have a conversation. Before then, my fellow viewers, be mindful of what conversation and things you discuss with people until you find out the fundamentals. Because there's no point. It's, 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 not, it's no point. And I've learned that the hard way, like trying to you know, explain and get into deep discussions with certain people. And I'm thinking, I said, okay. And it just, just came back to my memory, like, why, 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 why? Look at what the Apostle Paul did. He didn't st go in and start breaking down circumcision and uncircumcision and all these deep things. And he found out what's their, what's their, fund what's their foundation? Glory to God. What's the foundation? Many people come and go and I communicate with. What's your foundation? By the grace of God, I can share mine. 
Then said Paul, John verily back. See, they was baptized according to John. They, was, they didn't have the updated baptism. Their baptism was right for, for what the knowledge they had, but they, wasn't, they have not yet learned that the John's baptism was outdated. Not wrong, outdated because Jesus Christ came. His, John decreased and Jesus increased. So Paul had to explain to them. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Not the titles. When they heard this, they were baptized. They did not fight this. He, he, but these people were prepared because they believed the preaching of John, so they were already prepared. So yes, then we're going to come across people who, who have knowledge, have some knowledge. Limited as it may be, we can't look down on them. We can't look down on them or, or talk down to them. There's going to be people out there that have limited knowledge and, and believe in God, but like these people may not have the updated or the full understanding. So Paul, in his wisdom, with the Holy Ghost, explained to them, and they, didn't, and they did not fight Paul. These people could have said, oh, we were already baptized. Why do we have to get baptized again? I ask, I ask you, you can answer this for yourself. Have you heard that before? Oh, I was already baptized. I was baptized when I was uh, 9 years old, 10 years old, 11 years old. How were you baptized? I don't know. If you don't know, then how, what? What good can it do for you? Hallelujah to God. What good can it do for you? If, 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 how, what good can it do for you if you don't know how and you don't even know really why? Oh, because everybody else was doing it. My friends got baptized. They stood up, so I raised my hand too. I thought it was just something to do. Yeah, it's something to do. But you ought to know what you're doing and why. Because it's very important. It is not casual and last they fed this oh with this something to do my friends did it my friends used to smoke weed i didn't have to do it it was something to do so i did it my friends just went to the club that was something to do i went to the club baptism shouldn't have it shouldn't shouldn't be that way it's a conscience Conscious decision, recognizing your sin, our sinful state. Hallelujah to God. Thanks be to God, saints and friends and viewers. I pray and hope that this video was a blessing to you. And those that have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that you rejoice and be exuberated and, and excited to understand that you are in the will of God. It should be a great blessing to you. And those that, that watch and are, ha, have not, find someone who baptizes in water in the name of Jesus Christ and make sure they do it the right way. And don't be, as my brother Clinton says, and don't feel compelled because you got baptized there that you have to be a member of that organization. Because at the end of the day, it's your soul to save and your soul to lose. You're there to get baptized for your soul. Now, if the place that, 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 that baptizes you the correct way, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, according to the word of God, and they are preaching the word, light cannot fellowship with darkness. And if you're in the area, in, in, the, in the GTA, I'm not saying you got to come to my local place, but if you uh, need a place where someone to, to, be to, to be baptized the correct way, we have water, we have clothes, and we will take you down in the name of Jesus Christ the right way. And you can go on your way rejoicing. If you want to stay in worship with us, amen. If not, amen. But at least you can leave knowing that you were baptized the correct way. And then according to the word of God, you ought to wait and tarry for the infilling of the Holy Spirit.
with the evidence of speaking in, in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. And, and continue to walk in the apostles' doctrine. Email us, comment. We, pr we thank God for you. Continue to pray much for us. We mean well in Jesus' name. Amen.